Now let's talk about setting the access level for a variable. Of course there's a video I want you to go and look at it and of course after that we can continue to conversion of data types. There's a practice in which allows you to go and set access levels for variables that you could actually do before you do the lab. The last section before we get into the first section of this specific class and do the lab 3.1 talks about converting the data types. There are available conversion utilities that are basically fairly uh, familiar to you perhaps if you have been doing VB for a long time. You could use C stands for conversion and then the type convert to a string, convert to integer, convert to date and many other types that might be available throughout the MSDN library such as C date, C type, C double, C end. C type basically is pretty new. C type is asking you what type would you like to transfer from one type to the other. In other words, you're fairly flexible in regard to com comparison uh, between the types. So in this scenario, if you use C string, you're converting an integer into a string value. You could convert a double into a, an integer. And of course, you could convert a string value into a date value, for example. As I mentioned, there is a specific uh, conversion utility like C, whatever the function is, C integer, C str, and so forth, that automatically converts. If you do not do that, we'll be implicitly converts, but not necessarily does a good job all the time. Uh, specifically, if you're trying to add two string values that are representing numerical values, uh, VB automatically concatenates them. Like, for example, if you want to add 10 and 100, it actually makes it 10, 100 as one number. Uh, rather than giving you 110. So you have to explicitly convert them. That's of course make the code a lot faster to be executed and also you're reducing the logical errors. So how implicit data conversion works, data types are automatically being converted, no special syntax required in the code, and this is an example. As you see the sequence is already declared as a string value and of course the set uh, you have set the value to be 1, 2, 3, 4 and then here the number automatically gets implicitly converted. In other words, 1, 2, 3, 4 becomes 1,234. So this is implicit conversion that VB.NET provides for you. There's a disadvantage though. You can yield unexpected result and you could run uh, slower just because the conversion has to be taken effect at runtime. There's a lab in which allows you to go and play and practice with variables. This lab might take you about 45 minutes to complete and of course you can always go back and do this lab. But for now let's continue and finish up this specific module. In the next few slides we go and talk about how to create and use structures. Sometimes happens that the data types that you're looking for it might not be uh, of a kind that might be of an interest to you. In other words you might want to go and create more complicated data types. We call those as a structure. In other words, you're grouping related information into a single structure and we see them as a data type. We call them as user-defined data types and they are kind of a value typed data types. For example, you might want to uh, go and uh, combine different information regarding a person like employee name, date of birth, hire date, and job title as one single structure. We know them as employee data structure. In order to declare a structure, you need to basically use the following syntax. So what are structures? There are composite data types, they are used to create user-defined value types, and the members can be variables, properties, methods, or even events. It's very, very similar to the modules or class, and of course you could use them as a data type. It gives you lots of power. This uh, structure keyword replaces type def in Visual Basic 6.0. Uh, you could define a type in Visual Basic 6.0. Now we are replacing it with the word a structure, which is very, very compatible with the structure keyword in C++. So the way that you're declaring a, a structure is as follows. You specify the access modifier, the structure keyword, the name of the structure, and basically you go and declare the variables in there. Even you can declare a method in there and basically go ahead and end the structure at the end. So if you pay attention to this demonstration here, if I go back to my, for example, form 2, as you see, if I go to the code, you cannot declare a, a structure within a procedure. It has to be a module level. So as you see right now, if I go inside of my procedure and say, first of all, I can't even use public because I'm inside of a procedure. If I use a structure keyword and call it, for example, my data type, it didn't automatically close the, 
my structure block even though I do it manually it still doesn't like that it still doesn't want me to do this so if I move this structure at the top automatically as you see it accepts the structure block however it fails on the name it says you must at least contain one specific variable in there so if I go for example with them public private whatever I like to do I go with public for example for example my first name as a string for example automatically the error gone gone away so I can also provide access modifier for my uh, structure so that way I can have basically a new data type I could go with more like public last name as a string I could for example go with public age as byte for example because no one lives longer than 255 so it wouldn't make sense to put integer or double for that and also you could define basically a procedure you could go with public sub for example my procedure and do anything in it like message box hi so now how do we use the uh, structure anyways as you see the structure it just provides me a data type you could use this uh, structure like you're using a regular data type here I can say them my uh, structure for example variable as type I called it my data type so as you see the icon refers to that data type in here so basically if I refer to my structure variable again I can get exposed to all available variables that I've created like even your procedure as a method last name first name and age as a property so I have created my own user defined data type which is pretty complicated is a composite values of many different uh, standard uh, common type system data types and I've placed them as one single entity so in this demonstration you saw how to work with the structures so once again you could declare the structure inside of a module file or a class not in a procedure the syntax is as followed you have to provide the access modifier like public private or friend use the structure keyword and then specify a name and at least declare one structure member inside of this block and then of course the access modifiers are available is public protected friend and private perhaps you say I am familiar with public friend and private we have already talked about that what is protected protected basically is only working within its own class in other words you want to share it within all available procedures inside of a module but you don't want to share it with any other modules so that makes it protected so protected it only works within its own class perhaps you say so what's the difference between protected and private because private does the same thing for me the difference here is that protected is exposable to the inherited classes as well but private is not even exposable to the inherited classes either in order to understand the inheritance you have to take other classes but protected is one level higher than private in other words you're sharing yourself with your children as well it's like a family matter friend family private and public you could use that analogy you know to really understand this uh, specific access modifiers in here I recommend that you should take 23 to 73 after this class obviously and then you understand object-oriented design even better and you understand inheritance even a lot more remember that you don't assign values to the data members in the declaration you only do it when you create an instance of it so there is a, a specific a steps that you have to take the, uh, these uh, steps are necessary first you have to declare a structure then you declare a variable of that uh, structure type and then you assign values to the data members of that uh, structure as you realize on my demonstration in here so after I basically declared a variable of my data type then I can assign variables in there for example that's how you do it you're not going to go inside of the structure in order to uh, specify the value in there that's not ac acceptable you cannot do that in here why because you're creating a template you're creating a model as a data type and if you want to take advantage of it you have to create an instance of it first so it's kind of a uh, custom or user defined data type and it acts like a, a specific entity there's a practice in which allows you to go and uh, work with the structures now let's talk about arrays what is an array the definition of it is as follows an array is a series of data elements that share the same types so as you see in here all elements in an array have the same exact data type 
the individual elements are accessed by using an integer index. So in this scenario, every single array member in .NET, as you see, there are zero base. In VB 6.0, you could set the uh, array membership from one sometimes, but using option base one. No more support for that. Everything is zero base in VB.NET, so keep that in mind. In this scenario, if I have an array of value of six, as you see in here, I've declared a variable as a type integer, as an array. And how did I do that? By using the parentheses and the name of number of elements that I want to have within an array. In this scenario, six. That will give me seven different elements. So in order to declare an integer array with seven elements, this is the code for it. Them, whatever the name is, camel casing, count houses, parentheses six, parentheses closed as integer, that gives me seven elements as you see in here. And I can refer to a particular elements ID by referring to the index for it. Text box one, the text will get the value of the count house two, which gives me the third elements. One, two, three. It gives me this third elements as you see in here. There are zero based, so that refers to these third elements right down in here. How to declare a single dimension array? Very simple. You specify the access modifier, you specify the array name, the size for it, and the type for it. And then, of course, you can take advantage of the declaration and specify the value for every single me member that way. You could specify the keyword in here, array name, and specify the value. That automatically gives you not only the membership, but also the value for it. So the keyword can be dem or access modifier. The size of the elements would be available in here, like size of multidimensional array in this scenario. It will give you one, two, and three different members, uh, actually dimensions within this uh, specific area. Let's pay attention to this demonstration.